Hi, Mr. Long, and we're going to be looking at a third question at a Delphi test, which is just the basics into Delphi. And in this question, we're looking at some just basic input processing and outputting, some basic calculations. So let's get into it. So here we have a question where it says there's a button called BTN Calculate that will take input for the price of a rugby ticket in the EDT price edit control, and then the tickets, the number of tickets we want to buy in a spin edit control called SPN Quantity. And we must calculate a some sort of price value. So let's have a look. We're supposed to get you that value if we put 150 and two tickets. Um, so how do they get that calculation? Well, first of all, we if you buy two tickets and they're 150 rand each, you just multiply the two to get the total price. But what they've done extra is they've added 14% VAT. So we need to work out 14% of that 300 of the total price of the tickets. And whatever that that amount is, we're going to add it onto the 300. So that's how they get the 342. And please take note, they want us to display it like that, which means there must be two decimal places and there must be some sort of currency symbol in front. Um, so there's the R for Rand. So, so let's go to the code. There is our program. I'm going to double click on the total button. And we've already got two variables there, our price and our, or our price and our quantity. So let's start with getting the input. That's always the first step. Let's get information from the user that wherever they typed it into variables. So I've got the R price uh, variable, and I'm going to change it to be whatever they typed in the EDT price edit box. Now that is an edit box. It's got a whole bunch of stuff in it. How do I get what they typed into the little block over there? What they typed in there? Well, that property of what they typed in is stored in the text property of the edit box. So we say dot text. Now that is a string and that is a real or float. So we must convert it from a string to a float. Otherwise, it doesn't fit into the variable. But we need to convert it first so that it fits into the variable. So that was for the price. Now to get the quantity, I want to change the quantity to be whatever is in that component. Now that's a spin edit component. And if you look there, you can see right at the bottom, the value that's inside there, the number that they type in or the number they select or go up or down for, will be stored in a variable called value. So when we get the value, we're going to take the spin edit control quantity spin quantity and we can say the dot value now i want you to notice here that the value property is of type integer and we are storing it in an integer so therefore we don't need to convert anything because an integer fits perfectly into an integer so we've got our two values that's great so now we've got to do our processing how do we calculate these things so first of all i'm going to calculate the price um, the full price so i'm going to make a variable called full now i'm going to make it a real purely because we are working with reals. Although one of them is an integer, one of them is a real. So for it to all fit into a variable, it must use a real variable because although integers can fit into integers, reals and integers can fit into reals. So we're going to say the full price is equal to whatever the price is of one rugby ticket multiplied by how many tickets we want to buy. So that's step one. Then we have to work out the VAT. So I want to make a variable called RVAT. You don't have to do it in so many steps. If you can do it in one, that's great. I like to break it up into steps. That way I can make little less mistakes and make sure that I can see where I go wrong if I do make a mistake. Now to calculate the VAT, the question said 14% of the full price. So 14%. So to write 14 as a percent, you say 14 divided by 100. And when we say 14% of, that means we're multiplying. And we're multiplying that by the full price. Oh, that was spelled terribly. There we go. Okay, so now we have the full price. Now we have the 14% of the full price. So some sort of final price. So let's go here and go our final. So we're going to get the final price is going to be the full price plus whatever the VAT is. And those are our calculations. And I hope they're right, but we won't know unless we display it. And that's where we get to the output. So in the output, we want to take that answer and we want to put it into the EDT results edit control. 
So I'm going to say EDT results. Now, to put it so that it's displayed to the user, we've got to put it into one of its properties. And just like the user gets the value from the text property, we can put it into the text uh, property that will be shown to the user when they use the program. We want to make that equal to whatever the final price is. Now, the problem here, our final is a real or float, and that is a string. So we want to convert it from a float to a string. Okay, so that's the float to string. But there were some special specifications. They said it must be shown below. There must be two decimal places, and there must be a currency symbol. So to do that, well, we're going to have to use the float to string f function which takes in a couple of extra parameters you can look at if we go float to string open bracket you can see the first thing is it needs the real variable which in our case is r final then it needs what type of format now most of the formats start with ff so i'm going to type ff and press control space and the list of all the formats will appear um, most of the time we use fixed but because we're dealing with money i'm going to use currency so that's my format and then we have a number this number is the number that of places we want in front of the decimal i don't really mind as long as it's really big so i'm gonna make it eight that doesn't really concern me too much now this is the important one this the fourth variable or the fourth uh, this integer that we're going to put here is the number of places after the decimal place that we want to display well in this case we only want to display till two so there we go so float string f there's the what we want to convert that's the format, that's after the decimal place, that's before the decimal place. Let's run it and see if it works. Hopefully we get the same number. And there we go. Great. Now let's move to the next question. The next question over here. Boom. It says we're going to get a discount. So when we click on the discount button, we will prompt the user for the value that represents the percentage amount. So let's say they're prompting for the word like 5 so therefore they will get five percent so whenever we prompt the user let's have a look at our code i don't see anywhere for them to type in anything for the discount so when they say prompt it's normally because they want some sort of box to pop up where they can type in so when we click on this get discount we're going to get a discount amount so i'm going to say uh, discount percentage so let's make it uh, we can make it a real integer i'll make it an integer just to make it a number are discount percent, disc percent of type integer. Now, to get it, we don't have an edit box, so I'm going to say the disc percent is going to be given a value from some sort of input box. Input box takes in three strings. Those strings appear in the input box. This, the first string appears in the top uh, part of the box, in the blue part, so we're going to say in, um, discount, just like some sort of label or title. Um, the next um, string is normally some sort of question, so I'll normally say enter the discount percentage. We can be polite and say please. And then the last is what value must be in the edit box. In most cases, we the user is going to type something there. If you want to put a default value, you can put something here, but I'll normally just leave it like that. So that will be our input box. Now, our input box is going to then return whatever the user types in to that little space. Now, when they type that in, it's going to return it as a string. And this can become a problem because this is an integer. So when the input box is completed, this uh, at this particular point, it's going to be a string. So before we put it into the integer, we must convert it from a string to an integer. And then we put that whole input box inside of that string to int function. So there we go. So now that's prompting the user. That's how we can get input if we don't have edit boxes to do it. Now, what must we do with that 5%? Now, we've got to work out 5% of whatever the final value of the price. Now, that is another problem because we don't have access to that final price. Because it was created, or that variable was created in another procedure, another button click. So when that button click is completed, that value, that our final variable doesn't exist anymore. We actually want it to exist and keep its contents for the duration of the program so that we can use it in the discount button. So we can't actually have it as a local variable. Oh, that one. We can't have that one as a local variable. We need it as a global variable. 
So I'm going to come up here. You can declare your local, your global variables up here. I sometimes declare mine over here. So I'm actually going to declare final over here. Now here is the tricky part. A lot of people forget. Once you declare it globally, you can use it in any of your buttons. However, if you do have a local variable with the same name as a global variable, in this case, the local variable over will take precedence over the the global variable when it's used in calculation. So when we put the answer in this calculate button in our final, we're not putting it into there, we're putting it into that. So we actually need to get rid of this variable, which is okay, because we've got our final there, which can be used throughout this button click. And then once we've clicked on that button, our final at this point will have some sort of answer in that we can now use. So we're going to work out the discount amount, which is going to be some sort of real, because we're dealing with real numbers now. Real discount amount of type real. And I'm going to say the our disk amount is equal to whatever we gave in as an input here. So let's pretend that is 5. So our disk percent. But we don't want to multiply the amount by 5, we want to multiply it by 5%. So we've got to convert that 5 into a percentage. So we divide it by 100, and then we multiply it by the R final. Again, you'll notice it hasn't been declared there. That's fine because it's a global variable. So that should give us the discount amount. And now my R final is going to be whatever the R final is minus the discount amount. So take whatever the final amount is and just minus the discount amount you could have created a different variable for that if you wanted to i just reuse the final variable and said take itself minus the discount and make that the new r final and then we must display it how must we display it we'll always check we must display it again two decimal places with the currency but we must say the word with discount at the end so it's going to be very similar to this I'm actually going to do a little cheat here and just copy that. Well, it's not a cheat. It's just working smart. So in the, the result um, edit control, in the text field, we're going to put the R final as a float to string F with currency 2. Great. But the only difference is we're going to add the word or words with discount. Not discount. Discount at the end of that a variable R final once it's converted to string, we're going to add this to the end. So let's just double check to see if it works. So that calculates correctly. Now, if we do the discount, we want to put in 5% of discount, and there we go. That seems to work. Just to show you what would have happened if we hadn't removed R final from the as a local variable, let's just see what it would have looked like. It's going to be incorrect, but let's just see. So that part is correct, but when we work out the discount, it doesn't have a final value to work from. So when we say 5%, it's going to work out zero, and that's not what we want. So that's why, remember, whenever you're using global variables, make sure that that global variable um, is declared at the top, and make sure that you're not using that same variable name in other programs, because then it's going to override in that procedure only what it's going to use the local variable before it uses the global variable so there we go and there we've done that question and we've got all 15 marks